Hey everybody, welcome to The Untamed Chef, and it's all about pasta today here in my kitchen. We're gonna show how to make a beautiful lasagna from scratch. Now, what we're gonna do to get started, I'm gonna show you a simple way to do pasta. We don't wanna go into this traditional folding the egg in with a fork and making a big mess. I figured out a way to make it easier for us and for our kitchens, so let's get started with this real quick. The first thing we're gonna need here is we're gonna use one cup of flour, two tablespoons of water, three tablespoons of oil, and one egg. Now the ratio standard for making pasta is one cup of flour to one egg, two tablespoons to three uh, tablespoons of oil. So what we'll do is we always want to level this off when we're doing it, just to make sure so we don't have over. If there's any overage on there, it's going to have an inconsistent pasta. We want to make sure it's nice and soft. Three and four. One egg. We don't want to mix this yet. Two tablespoons of water. And sometimes what I like to do just for a little bit more, I'll put about a half more of a tablespoon. This is our Arbasana. Extra virgin olive oil from Rosenthal Olive Ranch. Three tablespoons of this. Now, usually they say you're supposed to put salt in pasta, but if you're making something that's gonna have salt in it, I always think it's just an overkill. Plus, we're gonna salt our water, and that's actually gonna help to bring that level of salt up in our pasta. So notice I got this bowl here, and it's very deep. We don't have a lot in the middle, and this is exactly what we want because we're gonna stir this really fast. And when we start to stir it, it's gonna form our pasta really quick here. We don't have to make the big mess, like I said. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way, but when you're learning how to make pasta for the first time, make it easy for yourself. So what I'm gonna do is really quick, I'm gonna grab my whisk. We got our egg right here in the center. And what I'm gonna do is whisk it as fast as I can. I'm just gonna back up a little bit so we don't get ourselves. We're gonna work that egg in real quick. We're gonna whisk it real fast here. If you notice, it's kind of shooting over the sides. That's okay. We start to see how it's all crumbling up together and this is exactly what we want right here. So what I could do now is just pour this down on my... We'll start to work this in. Now it is a little bit moist and that's okay. We want it to be because we're gonna still need this pasta dough to make sure that it's ready for us to go here. And I'm just gonna press down on it. If it's not going where we want it to be, we can add a little bit more flour, but right now this looks really good. So what I'll do after I knead it here, I'm gonna form it into a ball. And then what we'll do is we'll put it in the fridge for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, it'll be ready for us to roll out and we can start to make our lasagna and our papadel pasta. So I'm gonna finish this up. We're gonna put it in a plastic bag right here. We put it in very tightly. I'm pinching. We want to spin it around, keep it real tight. We want to make sure no air could get into here. 10 minutes in the refrigerator, it'll be ready to go, and that's going to give me some time to get started on our bison bolognese. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to start on our bison bolognese. This is so different because most of the time when we think bolognese, we think of ground beef, ground pork, sometimes even ground turkey. But bison, it's a more lean meat. And we're gonna add a lot of flavor to this. So what it's gonna do is really pop this dish where we want it to be at. Let's get started. Using our Rosenthal Olive Ranch Korniki olive oil on a low heat, we're gonna add about two tablespoons of this. The first thing we wanna get started because we don't want the bison to get overcooked is cleaning up all of our mushrooms. Now we're on a low heat and this is exactly where we want to be at just to make sure 
that nothing gets burned up and that's very important when we're doing this. I'll show you guys a trick here. With bell pepper, we want to get our bell pepper. We just want to roll it. We don't need a lot of bell pepper, but we want to make sure it's in there because anytime I cook pasta, I just always think bell pepper should be somewhere in our dish. But this bison, like I said, it's very lean. It's a good product, but more importantly, the flavor that we're going to have out of the bison, what we're adding to it, it's going to have like a little southwestern mix on a bolognese. So we're kind of mixing the southwest with Italy right here. So we're just getting this moved around here a little bit at a time. We don't want to season it yet. When I put the bison in, then I want to season because we don't want this to get over seasoned at all. Okay, so here's our bison. Beautiful. Very lean, like I said. It's almost like uh, ground beef meets turkey. So it's very lean, which means we're going to have to add a lot of flavor to it. But it's not a problem at all. Using our chipotle garlic, cooking sensations, gourmet seasoning. I'm going to mix this around. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it all in. I want to season it really good because... Everything in the middle has to get seasoned as well. And then we're going to add more seasoning in there. So just a little bit at a time. Very easy here. And like I said, I'm going to add more seasoning. It's not going to be, I know it looks like it's not fully seasoned, but this is important because if we add all the seasoning now, we won't know how to fix this once we add the tomato in and we add everything else in. It's very important that we just keep it simple. A little bit more of our chipotle garlic seasoning just right over the top because I'm going to give this one turn. Once we give it a turn, that's going to be it. Just use a spoon if you're having a little bit of trouble like I am. Just turn it right over. Okay, so this is what we want right here. You can see the color. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more of our uh, Arbasana olive oil. We're going to really try to get this color to come up now. Got a nice onion right here. Take off the uh, first two layers. That's just the way I do it all the time. And this will be a nice thin onions. And what this is going to do is melt right into this bolognese that we're working on here. And if you see any stems, it's not a problem. Just take them right off. It's not a big deal. We start taking a look at the color and what we have here. What we're trying to do, like I said, once we seal in that color, then we're going to make sure our food isn't bland at all. Then once I seal in this color, I'm going to add in our tomato because the tomato, it'll go really fast when we're doing a bolognese. All right, we'll move all this aside here. Using our spoon, we're going to flip it one more time. Oh, it smells absolutely amazing in here. Oh, my goodness. A little bit more seasoning because now we're done with our seasoning. Using our tomato right here. Now, what I'm going to do with the tomatoes, I just want the pulp out of this. So whenever we put the pulp in, we're going to bring it down because we don't want this to splash on us. It's always important that you have the pulp, which is the stewed tomatoes. And then our actual sauce is going to be the uh, cream and the uh, tomato sauce. This looks fantastic. Take a look at that right there. Tomato sauce is going in now. I'm just stepping back. You guys notice that? Okay. So one question I get asked all the time is why is my pasta very bitter whenever I do a bolognese? And the reason why, it needs sugar. In order to cut the acid, we got to have some sugar in the tomato. So what I have here is a little bit of sugar. Let's start with a tablespoon. We'll get this mixed around. We're going to bring up the heat. 
I'm gonna add a little bit of our uh, organic pastures raw cream. Perfect consistency, perfect thickness when we do this. A little bit more sugar. I'll bring the heat down because I start to see it splashing. We don't want to get splashed. And it's very easy. Whenever it starts bubbling and it's going really hard, all you got to do is either just take it off the heat if it's going really bad, or all we can do is just turn the heat down. That works always for me. Once I have it fully mixed in and incorporated in there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the heat back up. All right, so you could take a look at what we're doing here. Flavors are concentrating. We got our sugar in there. I'm gonna add just a little bit more sugar. Mix this around. Take a look at this. How beautiful is this? This is a bolognese sauce right here that we've done. You know, and I always laugh because some people say bolognese, some say bolognese. Me personally, I like to say them both. So it's bolognese, bolognese, whatever you want to say. Everybody says it a different way. So we're bringing it down just a little bit more and it should be ready to go here. And then what we're going to do, okay, so using our organic pastors, raw cheddar, we're going to put this into our pasta sauce. We're going to bring it down and our bolognese should be ready to go. All I'm going to do is just take it off a little bit. We don't need a lot. We're going to use a microplane right over the top and it's just going to melt right in there. It smells so amazing in here. Oh my goodness. We want to use a lot of it right there. I'll get my spoon one more time. We're going to mix it around. And here we have it, my bison bolognese, untamed, but very real. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Pasta's out of the fridge. As you can start to see, we can put our fingers through it. We can play with it almost like Play-Doh when we were kids. We all did that. I'm gonna pull this out here. You can start to see that it's gonna work with us and that's exactly what we want. Flour goes over. We're gonna coat the top here of our board. A little bit more and we should be good. Okay. Pasta goes in the middle here. If you discard this, we don't need this anymore. I'm just gonna start pressing just with my fingers. I'm gonna flip it over. Same thing. And what we're trying to do is we don't want to just push it down. We got to get it all fully out. If we do that with our fingers, then we roll it. Most people, you'll see them grab the rolling pin and just start rolling it, but they're going to have bubbles in the pasta. We don't want to have any bubbles or any lumps. So I use my fingers. It doesn't take too long, you know, a couple minutes just like this. And then when I roll it with the pin, it's actually going to help us instead of uh, not help us. So I'm mixing it around and I'm putting it, pushing it out now. I always want to start with the center, work our way out. So we're pressing it down, stretching it out. Now I'm starting to do this right here. I'm pushing it, I'm kind of pulling it a little bit. And this is going to help us a lot when we're going to roll with the pin right now. We're going to start doing that. And you know what, when you're doing this, you got to put a little bit of force. It's not bad. You might, you know, break a sweat, but hey, when we're cooking untamed, there's nothing wrong with breaking a sweat. Alrighty, so it's nice and soft. I'm gonna get a little bit more flour. I just really wanna make sure that we don't have no sticking at all. I rub that in, turn it over, a little bit more. We're gonna rub it in, put a little bit of flour on our rolling pin here. Now with rolling pins, it doesn't matter if you got just one of the long stick rolling pins or you have one like this one right here that actually has a rolling device in it. Whatever you have works. I'm just rolling and when I roll, I'm putting some pressure down, but we don't want to put a lot of pressure right away. If we put a lot of pressure, it's not going to roll. It's just going to start tearing the pasta. You got to remember whenever we work with something and we've made this from scratch, we really want to be delicate with it. You know, this is our, uh, my wife laughs all the time. I always say my food is my baby and I take really good care of it. We're gonna put it over here, roll it over again. So we did the first side. Now it's time for our second side. And we wanna make sure to brush off that flour. We don't want it to be all covered in flour. We do want the flour to be in there. And it's already worked through there, so we're good. 
And there's many ways we can do this, but like I said, today we're doing it with our roller. If you have a pasta machine at home, hey, I'm all happy for you. <clears throat> And it's almost about ready. A little bit more here. Turn our fire up, get our water going. And so like I said, we've stretched it out. We started pressing it first, and this helps to get it to where we have it now. If we just went straight in with this, it would have torn. I can tell you that right now. We don't want it to tear at all. Very delicate. I'm gonna do this side one last time, and then we're gonna start cutting up our lasagna. Now you can let pasta dry, I say about maybe four to five minutes, but the way we did it, very simple and very quick, we could go straight into the refrigerator, let it sit for its 10 minutes, and we could bring it right out. Because I think pasta tastes better when it still has a little bit of that real moisture in it and it's not completely dried out. If we want to dry pasta, we buy box pasta, right? Exactly. Alrighty, we're ready to start cutting. Now the way we do this, it's very simple. I'm gonna take off these edges that are just kind of, you know, they look a little cloudy. We don't want them in there. Very simple. We'll bring it around. We're gonna do it to the other sides here. It doesn't matter if it's not consistent. We just wanna make sure that it's ready to go because I'm gonna roll it one more time with a little bit more flour when it's nice and rectangled here. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it looks good. It's gonna definitely work. I promise it tastes really, really good. So I'll press down one more time. We're just trying to get this stretched out a little bit more. Now, if you're doing a lasagna like we're doing, we want it to have some real al dente to the tooth bite. I think lasagnas are amazing when they're done right. And the way we're doing this here, it's gonna really have that bite that we're looking for. And there you have it. Our pasta is ready to go. It's nice and thick. We could have made it a little bit thinner, but with the lasagna, I really want this to have some bite because when we put this in the oven, it's gonna have that bite we're looking for and that little bit of that crunch from our cheese. It's gonna taste really fantastic. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get our water seasoned and we're gonna get started. Very carefully what we've done here is we brought a pot of water up to boil. I'm gonna put in some salt. Now when we do salt, some chefs want it to have, you know, more salt than there is water. I'm not one of those. Because we have such a balance of flavor with our bolognese sauce already, and we have the balance with our pasta, we want to make sure that the water has enough salt in it just to help bring this to life, but not kill it. I usually close the lid. 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, zero. So depending on how many people we're cooking for, we want to make sure that we have pasta for everybody. I'm thinking three sheets would be a really nice lasagna just to show everybody how we're going to do this. Now what I like to do when I do my pasta, I want to have two that are exactly the same and one that's thin because what I do is I want the meat to droop over the sides. That's gonna help this to have a nice presentation as well. So here we go, into the water. Salt water, pasta one, pasta two, pasta three. This does not take a long time. As soon as they start to float, they're done. And I don't like to get the pasta and put it in cold water and shock it because it just kills the starch and that's what we want. We got our uh, baking dish ready here. As soon as it comes up, I'm gonna pull them out and we're gonna get started. So what I'll do is just mix it around here. We want to make sure, and you can start to see the water. You definitely know that there is salt in that water because the color's already starting to change up here. This is what we wanted. Here we go. Ooh, it's hot, so be careful. Like I said, it doesn't take long at all. And you'll be very careful to see, I kind of broke one here, but it's okay. The cheese is going to bring that all back together. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to start putting our bolognese on here. But before we do that, I want to get some of our cheese on there because that's going to act as a glue for this meat. Using our organic pastures, truly raw cheddar, 
just going to put the top here. We're bringing it low. I want to make sure that it really gets in there. And what I like about these dishes, they're really good for baking when we're using a Le Creuset. All righty. Our bolognese here now. Give it a little mix around. It's very important. We want to get all of the uh, sauce mixed in there good. That way everything is fully seasoned. The color is so vibrant. That's exactly what we want when we're cooking untamed. And we're just topping here. We're going to put another sheet on. This is our thin middle sheet. This one is a little bit thinner than the other ones. And the reason why, it's going to drop it to droop down over. So that way we're going to coat the whole bottom of this dish. And this is a very, very traditional Italian style rustic pasta. It doesn't have any spinach in it. It's just really for a meat and potatoes kind of family, but it tastes really good. So we're just putting it back right over here. Now, when I do this, I'm going to turn the dish around because I really want to make sure we get the side. We want this to coat the side. So it's going to be like all this pasta is going to be sitting in a little crispy dome. A little bit more right here. And then one last one here. This is the one that was broken, so what we could use is a little bit of the glue, which is our cheese. That'll help that to stick when it starts to melt in the oven. And I'll put a little bit of the bolognese over the top, and then we're going to get this in the oven here. This looks really, really nice here. Here we go. A little bit more cheese over the top. We've got all our cheese on here. And what I want to do just to make it a little bit cheesier, give it a little twist. We've got our cheese. We're going to bring it down as a curtain. It looks really nice. It smells amazing in here. I'm going to give that a little hit there. And what we're going to do is bring the pasta dish back to where we have it. I'm going to grab all the cheese and we're just going to push all of our excess cheese in. That way none of this cheese gets baked. You know, we want to make sure all the cheese knows it was loved before it gave up its nice cheesy life for us. So take a look at this right here. This is exactly what we want. We have pasta, bolognese cheese, pasta, bolognese cheese coated all around. That way every single bite is going to just explode in your mouth. This is untamed. This is so easy. Anybody can do it. We're going to put this in the oven. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back everybody. It's been a lot of fun. We got to take a little trip through uh, Italy here in the Untamed Kitchen. Got to demonstrate how easy it is to make fresh pasta. And I gotta tell you, every time you make fresh pasta, you get that nice warm feeling like of an Italian grandma's breathing down your back saying, you know, you gotta make it a little bit better. We like to do it a little bit easier. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But take a look at what we created today. This is just something to be very proud of. It's rustic, it's old fashioned, but it's also delicious. And what we're going to do to finish this off, I put a little bit of ricotta cheese and a little bit of fresh spinach. It just helps with the bite of this wonderful mix from our bison bolognese. I'm going to hit it with a little bit more of our organic pastures raw cheddar. Fresh black pepper. And I think you could use a little bit more cheese. This smells unbelievable. And what I like about the spinach, it gives that little fresh pop that we need in the dish that we just know we're eating healthy, so why not? But like I said, what we did today is unique and it's different than any other pasta you've ever had. We wanted to make our pasta thicker, that way it actually has some bite. I think every great lasagna has to have bite to it. You saw how we did it, we got untamed today, I had a lot of fun, and here we have my pasta dish that we created together. Lasagna with a bison bolognese, organic pastures, raw cheddar, finished with a little bit of ricotta and spinach to help us give a little bit of a fresh finish. We did it today, we got untamed. We'll see you again. I'm Albert J. Hernandez. You could call me the untamed chef.